we are going to begin with conceptual design of distillation systems. Most well known method okay, for design of uh, distillation systems is uh, the McCaptill method, right. It is very popular, but uh, it has its own constraints, right. Uh, the main limitation is that we have a binary system there, okay. Uh, if the system is multi component, then we cannot use McCaptill method, right. Another limitation is uh, it makes an assumption which is uh, supposed to be a very serious assumption most of the times that uh, it deals with constant molar overflow, right. It assumes that the flow rates, the liquid and vapor flow rates inside particular section, say rectifying section or stripping section, okay, they do not change as we go towards top or bottom, right. Uh, I told you the meaning of this that. Uh, latent heat of vaporization and latent heat of condensation of mixtures at that particular point, if they are same in that case this happens, okay. But most of the times uh, that is not true, right and we can go away from the constant molar overflow assumption, right. And because of that McCaptill method may not work well, right. So, these two issues are very important, right. Uh, the constant molar overflow assumption we can deal with that later, but the first the main limitation of McCaptill method that it deals with only binary system, okay. Uh, we want to realize this and we ex want to extend the McCaptill method to multi component systems, right. So, let us have a look at what kind of systems we can come across, okay, as far as distillation is concerned or design of distillation system is concerned. So, mixtures to be separated, right. So, we can have ideal system, we can have non ideal system, right. Then in both that is ideal and non ideal, we can have binary systems, can have multi component systems, right. In multi component systems, right, if there is ideality, right, if there is ideality, then we have to have the proper vapor liquid equilibrium equation, right. Now, for ideal systems, if a system is binary, okay, what is the vapor liquid equilibrium? Y is equal to alpha x upon 1 plus alpha minus 1 x. It is well known. What is alpha? Alpha is relative volatility, right. It is a, normally the ratio of vapor pressures, right. When it comes to multi component systems, we have to just extend this equation. Instead of defining alpha for one component, I have to define alpha for C minus 1 components. That means, suppose I have a ternary system, right. I have to define alpha for two components, take the least volatile component as the reference component and define your alpha relative to the least volatile component. For example, you have a system A plus B plus C, right. I define alpha for A and B relative to C or with, with respect to C, right. So, alpha for C is 1, right and alpha for A and B will be greater than 1, right. And there is a corresponding equation, we will see that later. So, that is the only difference, right. But then if I want to design a column, McCaptill is only for binary system, I can extend McCaptill method to ternary or multi component systems and that is something that we are going to see in today's lecture, okay. Uh, just before that, let us look at non ideal systems, okay. So in, in non ideal we have binary and multi component. In binary and multi component again you may have azeotropic or non azeotropic, right. So, you, you know what is azeotrope, you know um, what if you do not, if do not have azeotrope does not mean that the system is ideal, okay. You may have tangent pinch, right the vapor liquid equilibrium curve may not intersect the diagonal, okay. But you may have tangent pinch, your gamma, okay, or phi, that is fugacity coefficient is away from unity, okay. That is non-ideal system. So, you may have azeotropic system, non-azeotropic system in both binary and multi-component, right. And in azeotropic, you may have homogeneous or heterogeneous. Here as well, you may have homogeneous and heterogeneous, I have not shown that. Okay. The azeotrope can be homogeneous or heterogeneous, I told you about this. 
and in non azeotropic systems you may have a tangent pinch or you may not have a tangent pinch right so this is the classification of the mixture the type of mixture to be handled in distillation systems and your design method will change accordingly right so we are looking at the conceptual design of distillation systems i told you yesterday that there is a difference in design and simulation the type of problem okay in design you are supposed to find out the height of the column or number of stages right for given separation that is given xd given xb feed composition is anyway known right and you are supposed to find out number of stages right whereas in simulation it's exactly opposite that means the column number of stages is known right and then you you have a feed given and you are going to find out the composition along the height of the column on every stage and top and bottom right and you are going to solve this problem in today's simulation tutorial okay uh, you will use aspen okay to solve a simulation problem that means number of stages is given to you and you are going to predict okay the composition on each and every stage and in distillate and in bottom right so that is simulation problem and as far as this lecture is concerned we are not going to look at simulation we are going to look at design okay i'll tell you the role of design in simulation okay conceptual design rather so this is clear we have these many systems and your design method will change accordingly or your design method will depend on which system you are dealing with for this system binary ideal you know my capsule right there is no formation of azeotrope and all we can very well use mccaffill method even if there is a formation of azeotrope you can use mccaffill method but you should know that okay azeotrope divides the composition space and the feasibility issues issue is there ideal system means no azeotrope azeotrope means it is non ideal system right it is non ideal system uh, but doesn't mean that there is a formation of azeotrope or uh, sorry doesn't mean that if the system is non ideal there is always formation of azeotrope okay system is non ideal there can be azeotrope or there may not be an azeotrope that's why you see the system non ideal you may have azeotropic you may have non azeotropic you have azeotropic you may have non azeotropic right so azeotrope is the indication of non ideality okay but not necessary that uh, non ideality means azeotrope like when you have a binary system you don't have problem you can use mccaffill method only thing is like for example ethanol water system you have formation of azeotrope you should be in mind you should know that okay there is a limit there okay once you know that and of course when you draw this vapor liquid equilibrium plot when it intersects the diagonal okay you know there is a limit there and you can use mccaffill method draw your rectifying section profile stripping section profile count number of stages okay but you should know that okay i am not going to go beyond 95% concentration of ethanol in the distillate so i assume of course i'll quickly revise what mccaffill method is but i uh, assume that okay all of us know mccaffill method very well and then i will take a step forward and extend the concepts to the multi component system and the best or the simplest representative of multi component system is a ternary system so we'll illustrate one example or we'll give one example of ternary system and show how uh, the new method that we introduced today okay works for that particular system right the multi component ideal system okay non ideal system we'll deal with that tomorrow we'll just see multi component system and the same concept will be extended to azeotropic system later or other non ideal systems later so before we go ahead again okay what's the role of conceptual design i told you the methodical approach towards any design method or towards uh, design a distillation system okay is the first step is to get vapor liquid equilibrium and we have we know a lot about it it's a backbone of distillation design okay if you go wrong here okay you uh, your results though if you follow all of the steps okay properly it's not going to help you you are not going to get uh, good results right so next step before we go ahead right is a conceptual design okay in this 
what do you determine? What does it give you? Conceptual design tells you about the feasibility. Now, if your system is ideal, I know, okay, uh, I can separate any component in pure form, right. So, I really do not need to do feasibility analysis for ideal systems, right. Non ideal systems, yes, okay. The feasibility analysis is very important. If there is a formation of azeotrope, I must know that. For binary systems, again, if I draw that plot, I immediately come to know, okay, there is formation of azeotrope or not. But for multi component systems, they have ternary system. How many azeotropes are pos possible in ternary? There can be many, right. You have three binaries and there can be a ternary azeotrope as well, okay. There can be two ternary azeotropes as well. So, there is no limit on that. So, you can have various combinations and many azeotropes formation like when you deal with multi component non ideal azeotropic system. So, in that case this feasibility becomes important, right. So, as far as today's lecture is concerned where we are going to learn ideal systems, right, we are not really uh, going to deal with feasibility aspects, okay. So, next step is what does McCabe-Thiel method do, okay, just go back and recollect, okay. It finds out first the minimum reflux ratio, right. The same thing is expected here even for multi component systems, even for multi component ideal non ideal systems, I should get minimum reflux ratio as the outcome of conceptual design method, right. Assumption of McCarthy, no energy balance, I can make the same assumption here. I am going to come back and look at this energy balance issue later, right. Initially, as far as conceptual design is concerned, in order to make my analysis simpler, okay, I will just make the assumption that there is no energy balance required, again it is a constant molar overflow in the column, right. Then if it is a system and I am interested in all components in pure form, then I must identify possible sequences. That means, if I have multi component uh, mixture, okay, then it is quite possible that this mixture can be separated. So, suppose I have a multi component mixture, okay. Uh, a plus B plus C, right, and I want to separate all the components in pure form, okay. There are many possible sequences. If it is ideal system, then I do not have feasibility issue, right. I can do this, see A, B, C going to a column, right. I separate A in pure form from the top. Right. I get B C from the bottom, okay. Uh, yeah, but I design the column in such a way that I remove A from the top, okay. Right. Because I am interested in pure components. Now, this B C can go to another column, this mixture. I separate B from the top, C from the bottom. The order of volatility is A greater than B greater than C. Right. This is one possible sequence, but is it the only sequence? Are there any other possibilities? That is right. So, I can have something like this. I remove C from the bottom first in pure form and then I deal with A B mixture. Right. So, that two different possibilities right for a ternary mixture simple columns right can you imagine suppose you have four component system you have many possibilities five components right there are many possible sequences possible feasible sequences rather right and i should identify all the sequences okay before i go ahead because once i identify these feasible sequences later on i am going to select one of them okay based on some criterion of course, the best criterion is minimization of cost. And we can take the intermediate component from as a side draw, right, as a side draw. So, that possibility is there. I did not uh, show that possibility here because I am talking about simple sequences. So, what you are talking about is a complex sequence where I take some side draws. For example, a crude distillation column in the refinery. In fact, I have infinite components in the feed, right, and I take some side draws and remove the fractions of interest, right. So, that is a different issue. I, I treat that, I, de, I say that that column is a complex column and not a column that we are talking about here. We are talking about simple sequences. So, we have complex sequences as well, 
Okay. So, it is not just that we have only simple sequences, but we have complex sequences as well. So, uh, as such we should identify all such sequences right? and uh, then later on select one of them. Right? But complex sequences would need some additional efforts on operation, control and all. Right? So, those issues will also come in picture. Now, uh, so this is the role of conceptual design okay? in the overall design or rigorous design and later on what, what we do? It is not over here. Okay? Later on once I have the minimum reflux ratio, I say okay, my operating reflux ratio is about 1.3 to 1.5. 0.5 times the minimum reflux ratio and then I design the column again I get the actual number of stages right. Remember McCarthy does the same thing right ok. Once I have this now I have a column in front of me at least some picture of a column say I know these many theoretical stages are required right. At this stage I know the column would need some 30 stages ok for the required separation 30 equilibrium stages 30 theoretical stages or ideal stages you know the meaning of equilibrium stage right. So, once I know this I perform rigorous simulation right. What I mean by rigorous simulation? Simulation takes care of the energy balance as well ok and if you want pressure drop and other aspects also can be brought in right and then you can design a uh, or not design a simulated distillation column just to cross check your results. Okay, right? Because simulation, simulation needs an input in terms of number of stages. Like if you solve simulation problem, right? It will ask you how many stages you have. Okay, as I said before, in simulation problem, the column is in front of you, right? So you have to give number of stages there. So where will that number come from? The conceptual design helps you, right? Or in other words, yesterday you might have dealt with some shortcut method, right? That shortcut method is one way of doing a preliminary conceptual design. So it tells you, okay, how many stages approximate number is required, okay, to get the separation. But that's not a real number because I have made many assumptions at this stage, okay? At this stage, I have made many assumptions, right? So. In order to get a real picture, I have to do rigorous simulation. That is the role of simulation. Okay. So, simulation is definitely important, but it comes at a later stage. First, you have to go through the conceptual design. A system is ideal, okay. I do not have to really do all this. The system is binary, then just McCarthy will tell me okay, what is the minimum reflux ratio and all. But if it is multi component, non ideal, and azeotropic, then you have problems, right. So, I am trying to tell you the importance of conceptual design. It is important in complex distillations, right? And of course, once you have simulation ready and you have confidence in your simulation model, you can further go ahead and do optimization and control and minimize the cost, uh, overall cost involved in the distillation system, right? Start solving a problem, okay? I have a ternary system. This is the approach that I am going to follow. I am going to look at multi component system, but study the behavior of the ternary system first. Okay? And we will learn some concepts and we can extend those concepts to a multi component system in a generalized algorithm. Okay? Right? So, that I can solve this conceptual design problem on computer. Right? Let us have a ternary system. Okay? A plus B plus C or I will denote them as 1 plus 2 plus 3. Okay. So, A is 1, B is 2 and C is 3. Right. Volatility A is the most volatile, B is intermediate boiling, C is the least volatile. Okay. I am assuming the system to be ideal now. Right. Later on we will see if it becomes non-ideal uh, what modifications we need to do. Okay. This is the equation, very well known equation. For binary system, okay, this is for binary system. Now, can I extend it to multi component system? What is the multi component form of this particular equation? Suppose I have three components. Now, this is this is for binary, okay. This is not true for ternary. I have to modify this. Can I do that? A very general equation for multi component system is yi is equal to alpha i x i 
i is the species divided by sigma alpha i x i ok i goes from 1 to c right you do it for two component systems uh, two component system and you will get the equation but i is equal to 1 and 2 ok y is equal to say for example you have two components y a is equal to alpha a x a divided by 1 plus alpha a minus 1 x a you, you can derive this ok right and there is no alpha b because alpha b is equal to 1 in binary system for binary system b is the least volatile so alpha b is equal to 1 right for ternary system c is the least volatile so alpha c is equal to 1 right so in this case i will have alpha a say 5 alpha b say 3 and alpha c is equal to 1 so i don't need to really specify this okay right so just remember this is for binary and i have to extend it to multi component system I have to define alpha A and alpha B. So, two parameters are to be defined and I can get that from the vapor liquid equilibrium. I can generate the data as we seen yesterday, right. You can generate the data in laboratory and find out the values of alpha C and sorry alpha A and alpha B. The problem is design a column to achieve the required performance. Now, what is this required performance? Now, I want to solve this problem, right. So, I have to specify some variables. What is that? The performance is gauged by the purity right that means what is the value of x d so when i say x d x d is the distillate composition now distillate composition for all the three species right x b the bottom composition for all the three species given x f feed composition flow rate right okay so i have to define this first x d and x b these these compositions right for the given field composition once i define this then i can start solving a problem ok so is the problem definition clear right you know the end composition or you have to fix the end compositions field composition is given and you are supposed to find out the number of stages design a column the word design has a particular meaning that means i have to find out number of stages then height and diameter so height and diameter i can calculate very well the equations are known there are some correlations depending on whether you have packed column or tray column and all that right but number of stages would come from this exercise the thermodynamics so it depends on the vapor liquid equilibrium right now i have to define top composition and bottom composition this is your column Right. This is your column. The simple column you have field going in xf1, xf2, xf3 are the compositions right, of this particular stream, the field. Right. The top composition I am going to define this when I want to solve the problem xd1, xd2, and xd3. Bottom composition xb1, xb2, and xb3. Right. So, look at what you know and what you do not know. Now, when I am doing the degrees of freedom analysis, let us assume initially that a feed is given to you, right. Now, I have to specify the top and bottom composition depending on the requirement, right. Now, specify, do you need to specify all the compositions? Now, how many compositions are there? There are 6, right, 3 here and 3 here, right. I have to define 6 compositions, then only I can go ahead and solve the problem. But do you really need to define 6 compositions? for that you need to do degrees of freedom analysis ok. Let us see what whether all these 6 compositions are independent or there is some dependency there. The obvious dependency I can see here these are mole fractions the summation is 1 right. So, in that case I do not need to really define all 3 the moment I define 2 of them the third gets fixed automatically right. So, let us identify this dependency now unknowns all xds all xbs in the beginning right before i specify these compositions then d that is distillate composition and b right that is bottom uh, flow rate oh sorry d is distillate flow rate and b is 
bottom flow rate right. How many equations I have? I have the overall material balance equation okay. I have the component material balance equation for out of 3 components I can write it for 2 right because third gets fixed automatically because I have I am using the summation constraint I am using the summation constraint right. So, I have one equation for overall material balance, two equations for species or component material balance because third is dependent I can write it as independent equation right and the summation equation for top and summation equation for bottom right. I hope this is clear. So, how many equations I have total four equations right four independent equations how many oh sorry five independent equations right and how many unknowns you have eight unknowns right. So, degrees of freedom is three right. So, I need to define three compositions so that I can solve the design problem right ok. Now, which are these three unknowns? They can be any three of these eight right can be any three of these eight unknowns right. Typically in general now you have some objective right in the design I say I want the composition of the most volatile component in the distillate stream to be 0 0.99 ok right that is the constraint ok because I want to design it for certain performance. So, that x d 1 gets fixed right x d 1 gets fixed there can be another constraint saying ok the bottom composition of the third component should be that is the least volatile component should be 95 percent ok that is ag again one more performance criterion right. So, I define that as well. So, I define two of these ok. So, th these would come from the client ok. He will say I want this performance right. So, out of 3 you have defined 2 this is just an example you can define any 3 ok depending on your requirement. But I am just giving an example I have defined 2 the rest 1 you can fix based on like it is your, your choice is a choice of design engineer ok. It is a trivial composition it does not matter much because client is not interested ok in this composition right. So, define two compositions the third composition you define on your own right ok. So, three compositions are fixed because I want to solve the problem design problem for that I need to define ok all the end compositions right. So, this is just one example where I define these two compositions the composition of the most volatile component in the distillate stream composition of the least volatile component in the bottom stream right and the third composition any any one's composition I can fix right and rest all will get fixed automatically because I have these many equations right. So, I use these equations and get all the compositions all x d's all x b's d and b for given feed right. Now, my problem is defined ok it is completely defined now end compositions are fixed now I want to solve the design problem ok. Now, this is for three component system suppose you have five component system for three component systems we have seen that you have to specify three compositions or three unknowns right. For five component system can you do the degrees of freedom analysis? How many comp compositions or variables or unknowns you need to fix? For 5 component systems instead of 8 there will be 10 plus 2 right D and B. So, 5 here, 5 here Sorry, four, four, eight to be specific, right. right. So, before we do this analysis we have 12 here 12 right and how many equations you have? seven equations five. yeah. So, five is the degree of freedom right. So, you have to define five unknowns right you have to define five unknowns for a four component system it would be four right. So, we want to solve this problem now and let us start with what we know for as I said we are going to extend the McAptill method 
So let us look at the McAptill method. Okay. So what is it? We start with y x diagram, right? You have y here that is vapor phase composition, you have x here, you have this curve, vapor liquid equilibrium curve, right, which is obtained by thermodynamics, right? This vapor liquid equilibrium curve. Now let us look at a column. In the column, any stage, this is a stage, right? So what happens on the stage? You have a vapor going in, you have liquid ah, this arrow should be in the downward direction. Okay. So you have vapor going in and liquid going in, and you have vapor going out, liquid going out, right? Now when I say this stage is equilibrium stage, okay. What does it mean? I told you yesterday that these two compositions, compositions of the streams leaving that particular stage, they are in equilibrium, phase equilibrium, okay. And your VLE decides these compositions, right. And this is given by for a binary system, you know this equation. So, Ya is related to Xa, Yb is related to Xb, right. So, I have written these equations for a binary system. Okay. So, these two compositions if we plot them, okay, they will be uh, that point will be on the equilibrium curve, right? that point will be on the equilibrium curve. Now, in this particular diagram, suppose I get select one point on the equilibrium curve, it means that I define everything about this particular stage. Because for this point I know xa, for this point I know ya, I can use the summation equations to calculate xb and yb, I can calculate the temperature by bubble point. So for this particular stage all the compositions and temperature are defined. Right? The moment I plot a point here on this diagram, everything about that particular stage gets defined right okay a single point and the equilibrium curve on y versus x defines all the composition of the stage in the distillation column the stage is completely defined right now the next question is can we do it for the ternary system suppose i plot now i have a ternary system a b c I try and get this particular plot y a versus x a. Can I get this plot in the first place? It is difficult, right. I cannot plot a ternary system on y a versus x a, right, because the dimensionality increases, okay, right. Suppose there is some point here which satisfies the equilibrium equation, I do not get idea about other compositions because the summation constraint is now changed, right. If I want to calculate xb from xa, it is 1 minus xa minus xc, right. Okay. So, if I have a point here, does not mean that I have defined a stage in the column completely, right. It is very clear, okay. dimensionality has increased. So, what do we do? We have to find a solution. I want to visualize what happens. Okay, in the column like what McCaptill does for binary system. Right? So, what is the solution on this? Let us go ahead. I have a ternary system, this is your equilibrium stage. Now, I have these summation equations. Right? Then now, my equilibrium equation has changed. Right? I cannot do it on y versus x diagram, but I can choose some another frame of reference. Okay. And this is that frame of reference xb versus xa. Right. Now, in xb versus xa diagram, suppose I have a point okay, right, that tells me the composition of A on this particular stage or of the stream leaving that particular stage A, right, then composition of B in that particular stream which is leaving that stage, right. Let us say this is that point. Now, if I have this much information, can I make use of the relevant equations to calculate the compositions of all other species and define the system completely. 
can i do that let's look at the equations how many equations i have now i have defined two unknowns two compositions rather and i have how many equations i have this summation equation for that particular stage liquid composition i have this summation equation vapor composition right and then you have this vapor liquid equilibrium satisfied right you have these two streams which are in equilibrium how many equations you have how many such equations you have you have two equations right because you can write it for only two components third component since you're taking summation constraint in account okay you can can't write it for third component so you have four equations so out of six variables three y's and three x right you have defined two rest all will get fixed automatically because of these four equations right okay so total number of unknowns six three y's and three x's right number of equations four right compositions to be specified to define the stage okay 6 minus 4 2 that's what i'm doing here okay right so one may specify any two x values in a triangular diagram right and hence a point in xa versus xb diagram defines all the compositions right okay so i'm defining a new frame of reference a ternary diagram we, we use that in extraction problems you remember like liquid liquid extraction we use ternary diagrams right rectangular diagrams similar representation is used here for distillation systems for a ternary system right so you have x a versus x b instead of plotting x a versus y a now i am plotting x a versus x b and saying that there is one point here which defines the stage completely right because if i plot a point here and say that it satisfies the equilibrium equation then i have a value of x a i have a value of x b i make use of all these equations and get all other values right now what are the problems with this if you compare this representation with mccarthill okay there are some constraints okay i am not able to see everything here See Macathill, you can see on a stage even the Y composition, vapor composition, right? You can see the equilibrium curve, right? Because it was a binary system. But now with this representation, though I am presenting or I am defining all the compositions by plotting a point on this, I am not able to visualize vapor composition because there is no y plotted here on this okay i have to calculate it okay i have to calculate it from equilibrium equation and i can't can't see the vapor liquid equilibrium curve on this okay so you have to sacrifice okay for uh, knowing about a multi component system we can't we can't help it okay we have to pay for it because we are increasing number of components and we have constraint right we have two dimensional paper on which we can visualize the things right so for a ternary system okay you can visualize the entire system in a triangular diagram by plotting x a versus x b but i am not able to see y i am not able to see the vapor liquid equilibrium curve right does it matter okay we'll see later okay turns out that there is no need to really visualize the vapor liquid equilibrium curve there is no need to really see the vapor composition i can still work with this frame of reference and can visualize the composition profiles inside a column and can define certain rules which will give me the minimum reflux ratio for a particular design okay a particular requirement okay right is this clear ternary diagram now once i have fixed my frame of reference now before we go ahead okay uh, for quaternary system what will i do so for ternary i have this for quaternary system 
yeah, you'll have a three-dimensional uh, frame of reference. I'll have to plot x a versus x b versus x c. So three dimensions, right? And any point here defines the stage completely, right? For phi component, no, this is a four component, right? Phi component system. What will you do? Yeah, it's not possible. <laughs> it's impossible, right? Because we can't visualize, okay, four-dimensional frame of reference, right? But does that mean that we can't solve the problem? That's what I'm trying to tell you. So, by looking at ternary system or quaternary system, which we are able to visualize on these ternary or at the two-dimensional diagram or three-dimensional diagrams, we can define certain rules which are applicable to any system, any multi-component system, let it be 5 component, 6 component, right. So, that is the purpose, okay. That is what we are going to do. So, we are going to just learn third, 3 component system or ternary system, but we can extend that knowledge to any component system and there you do not need visualization because we will convert everything to an algorithm, okay, right. So, we can feed it to a computer and get a required results. Right. Now, I have this ternary diagram. Now, we are going to see this ternary diagram every now and then hereafter, okay, because I am going to deal with ternary system and not uh, binary system, right. I want to plot my rectifying section line. Now, it is not going to be line, okay, and stripping section line, or I would call them as trajectories, okay, because when I say line, it is a straight line, it has certain slope and all that, right. So, in McCabe-Thiel, what do I do? McCabe-Thiel method x a y a right, you have this equilibrium curve, you identify feed composition x d x b right and then you draw rectifying section profile. Of course, uh, first step is to get a minimum reflux ratio and all. But then what is uh, what is the rectifying se section line? This is the rectifying section line, right. What is the slope of this line? It is, yeah, the slope is r by r plus 1, okay. How do you get a material balance equation for this line? It is very simple. You have this column, this is the stage in, in the column in the rectifying section we have vapor going in, liquid coming out, you have a condenser, right. This is your distillate. You take material balance across this boundary, right, and you get an equation y i n plus 1 is equal to r by r plus 1 x i n plus x i d upon r plus 1. This is the equation that we get by solving the material balance, right. Now, this is your y n plus 1 i of course and this is your x m or x i n, right. So, these are the two compositions of these two streams, right. So, this is your rectifying section equation, right. And this is what you do in McCaptil method. Right. I want to see this rectifying section on my ternary plot now, okay. Right. See, I am just following the same method, right. So, this is your equation rectifying section line, and then you have stripping section line. What is S? S is the reboil ratio, okay. R is the reflux ratio L by D. Reboil ratio is V by B, right? V is the vaporization rate, okay, and B is the bottom rate. They are they are related to each other through D by B, right? So once I define R, S gets fixed automatically, right? Because if you write that overall material balance, S and R are related to each other, okay? Now I want to see this particular trajectory in the ternary diagram. Okay, in a ternary diagram. Now, this is my x d, 
why why your x d is over here why not here why not here see I am going to follow the convention this is your most volatile component okay that is your a okay right then this is b intermediate boiling right and this is c the least volatile component right and this is my convention now in the bottom bottom composition will be close to the least volatile component the top composition will be close to the most volatile component that's why i say i start with this this is my xd when i say xd that means xd1 xd2 xd3 because when i want to plot this particular point i need to know the composition of all the species in this then only i can plot it in the ternary diagram right so i plot this point this is my first point xd how do i get these points it's quite similar to what i do in mccaptill method a stage by stage calculation right when you know the top composition i go on solving this material balance equation for every stage right this is that equation this equation is valid for even ternary system okay this equation is valid for ternary system or it is valid for any multi component system right not not that it's only valid for binary system right this equation is general material balance right so the moment i know the xd the way i do this calculations in mccaptill method right i can do the same thing here right and go on calculating the composition on every stage and i can travel from top to bottom right the way i do graphically here i can do it manually by using some it's not very difficult okay you have to just do calculations material balance then equilibrium material balance then equilibrium and so on right so you solve for the rectifying section equation and plot those points okay right so this is the this is the equation or this is the solution of rectifying section profile right why it follows this particular path why it doesn't go this way it has a tendency first to go towards the intermediate boiling component and then later on it will move towards the least volatile component that's the way it happens no? in the distillation column At the top you have the most volatile and bottom you have the least volatile okay so normally for ideal system is going to follow this particular path okay it is going to go towards the intermediate boiling and then will move down to the least volatile component okay that is you see okay or the highest boiling component this is the path of the rectifying section profile now what about stripping section stripping section start with xb now xb is going to be close to c because c is the least volatile component and then i want to solve this equation in upward direction okay now my n is going from bottom to top is increasing right and i am going to solve this equation using the material balance and vapor liquid equilibrium right and i'll go up again the same trend is observed it will move towards the intermediate boiling and now you going to go towards the most volatile component okay right so this is the nature of the rectifying section trajectory and of course the stripping section trajectory this is the way they are going to move in the composition space the new composition space that we have defined for the ternary system ternary system you have this two dimensional plot xa versus xb right for rectifying section i am going to start somewhere here in this corner because a is the most volatile and i am going to move in this direction and come in this direction okay because that's the way the rectifying section profile will behave okay you can do this calculation yourself it's very simple okay you can use excel to do these calculations and we have some tutorials on that as well okay similarly here right 
you can go up and then come down right that's the nature of these two profiles so as i said when i say, yeah when i say this is this is the point what does it mean it has coordinates right it has xa right xa it has xb right this xa and xb are the stage compositions right and suppose i want to know y a and y b for that particular stage what will i do i'll solve that weber liquid equilibrium equation right and y c and x c summation constant right so everything is defined then right once i know this point so all these points are the stage compositions composition of the stream leaving particular stage right 